the ghost ship, Octavius. On today's Echoes Through Time channel, we travel to the North Passage. The story of the Octavius begins on September 10, 1761, when apparently the ship set sail from London under the command of Captain Hendrik van der Heul, former lieutenant of Captain Kidd, bound for China. After arriving months later at its destination, the Octavius reloaded its cargo holds to return, once more to Great Britain. But, mysteriously, the ship would never reach its destination, lost at sea sometime in the year 1762. For historians, it's difficult to determine whether the story of the Octavius is a legend or a real fact. Although, true or not, this story emphasizes the human adventurous spirit, its eagerness to discover new sea routes, and face the always powerful and hostile nature. The story is set in the midst of the 18th century, a period in which shipping companies competed to find the shortest route between the Atlantic and the Pacific in order to improve trade routes between the old continent and mysterious Asia. It is October 11, 1775, the Greenland whaler Harold was fishing in the waters of the North Atlantic when, suddenly, in the midst of a sepulchral silence, the voice of the lookout was heard shouting, Ship ahead and to the west! Indeed, in front of the whaler, and about 10 kilometers away, the masts of a ship could be seen protruding above an iceberg. As the whaler approached, the men realized that the ship hiding behind the iceberg was a three-masted schooner, something very unusual in those waters. Through the spyglass, Captain Alex Warren saw that the sails were completely torn, the hull was very deteriorated, and there were no signs of life on deck. Covered in a thick layer of ice, the Octavius gleamed under the sun, as if made of glass. When they were very close, the crew of the Herald called out to the crew of the schooner, but received silence in response. The crew of the whaler's hair stood on end with terror, it was a bad omen. Captain Warren then, ordered his crew to lower a boat to board the abandoned ship, and asked for eight volunteers. They were all experienced sailors, but they were also superstitious men, so none of them stepped forward, so the captain had to force eight of them to accompany him. As the boat approached the schooner, the crew could see the name of that mysterious ship, Octavius, a name they had never heard before. Upon boarding, they were greeted only by the creaking of wood, the whistle of the wind, the movement of the frost-covered, tattered sails, and the wheel of the helm creaking as it moved from side to side. There was no one on deck, the ship seemed abandoned so, gathering strength from weakness, they decided to enter the interior. Making their way through the ice-covered deck, the men descended into the cabins where they made a gruesome discovery. Lying in their bunks, and covered by layers of blankets, were 28 frozen sailors. The cold had kept them in a perfect state of preservation, as if death had surprised them in their sleep. When they entered the captain's cabin, they saw that he was sitting in a chair in front of his desk, dead, with a pen in his hand, as if he were making his final entries in the logbook. In the same cabin were three more bodies, a woman lying on a cot resting her head on her arm, and with her eyes completely open, a small child hugging a rag doll, and a man with a flint and a metal bar apparently trying to light a fire, that never ignited. The sailors of the whaler had seen enough, and urged their captain to abandon the Octavius as soon as possible. But he, unable to leave the schooner without an explanation of what had happened there, decided to go down to the hold, where he discovered that there was not a gram of food. Surprised, he returned to the captain's cabin and ordered one of his men to take the logbook. On board the boat, as they returned to their ship, Warren watched the Octavius as it drifted away on the horizon forever. Back on the Herald, Captain Warren realized that all the pages of the Octavius logbook were missing except for the first and the last. Why, where was the rest of the notebook? There are two theories about this, that the sailor who transported the notebook to the Herald dropped the other pages into the sea, or that they had stuck to the captain's cabin table on the Octavius because of the ice. 
Be that as it may, what the first page reported surprised the captain of the whaler, the Octavius had left England bound for China on September 10, 1761. That is, 14 years ago. The last page of the logbook was dated November 11, 1762, and said the following. So far we have been trapped in the ice for 17 days. Our approximate position is longitude 160 W, latitude 75 N. The fire finally went out yesterday, and the bosun has been trying to light it again, but without much success. He has given the flint to one of the sailors. The bosun's son died this morning, and his wife says she no longer feels the cold. The rest of us don't feel the same in this agony. Warren was astonished. Longitude 160 W, latitude 75 N. That meant that the Octavius had been trapped in ice in the Arctic Ocean, north of Point Barrow, Alaska, thousands of kilometers from where they had found it that day. What the Octavius had done was cross the legendary Northwest Passage, apparently posthumously. Apparently, the captain of the Octavius had decided to find the passage instead of returning home around South America. Unfortunately, like many others before him, all he found was death. Nevertheless, the Octavius had apparently achieved its goal. All the time it had been adrift it had been slowly sliding eastward, enduring the fury of the elements until it finally reached the North Atlantic. It wouldn't be until 1906, 136 years later, when another ship, the Joa, under the command of the Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen, would cross the mythical Northwest Passage. As for the Octavius, to this day no one has been able to verify or refute whether this story is true, or whether it is just another legend among the many about ghost ships, told by experienced sailors, to brighten up the endless nights during their long voyages. Subscribe for more videos.